Kim Philby, Britain's anti-James Bond. Kim Philby is probably Britain's most famous spy, after James Bond, of course. He is also Britain's biggest traitor. For 30 years, he lived as a double agent, manipulating his colleagues, denying his communist beliefs, while moving to the top of MI6 and defecting to the Soviet Union in 1963. He was born before World War I in Punjab, India. His father was a member of the Indian Civil Service, a well-known author and Muslim, and later became a civil servant in Mesopotamia and advisor to King Ibn Saad of Saudi Arabia. His family had a high reputation in the British Empire, the ruling class. As he grew older, he studied at Westminster School and later at the famous University of Cambridge where he studied history and economics. Cambridge was where Philby was first attracted to communism as part of the famous Cambridge Five, a group of five Cambridge students who later became Soviet spies. But he wasn't really involved with the Soviet intelligence service until after graduation. Philby moved to Vienna in the early 1930s, working to help refugees from Nazi Germany. He hated the Nazi movement. And while there, he fell in love with Litzi Friedman, a young Jewish communist from Austria. Philby liked her determination and strong political conviction. They got married and fled Austria in 1934, before the start of World War II. Coincidentally, the same year, an NKVD, Russian secret police agent, Arnold Deutsch, was sent to London and got in contact with Litzi regarding the recruitment of Soviet spies. Litzi told Philby one evening she had arranged for him to meet a man of decisive importance and the rendezvous took place in Regent's Park. The man described himself as Otto, but Philip discovered much later from an MI5 file that the man was actually Arnold Deutsch. From that moment on, Philip began feeding information to the Soviet Union. His first job for Otto was giving a list of names of those he met at Cambridge, who might respond to discreet contact. Although Philby himself states that he first became involved with communism at Cambridge, it was Lidzi who got him in touch with the Soviet secret service. Philby travelled to Spain in 1937 during the Civil War. He started work as a freelance journalist for British newspaper The Times, reporting from the pro-Franco side. He wrote favourable articles about Franco, but at the same time provided Soviet intelligence with information. They were interested in seeing how the new Medschemit and Panzer I and IIs were deployed in the nationalist forces. Philby also informed the British intelligence that, after a direct question to Franco, German troops would not be allowed to cross Spain and attack Gibraltar, at that time an important British stronghold. Philby used the war in Spain to get closer to the British intelligence service and make it seem he had adopted a right-wing ideology, following Franco and his nationalist forces, but his loyalties were still in the Soviet camp. His Soviet controller Theodore Malley and the NKVD had even instructed Philby to discover the system of guarding Franco and his entourage, with the plan to assassinate him. Philby was told to report the vulnerabilities in Franco's security and recommend ways to get access to him 
and his staff. His cover was so good, he was awarded with the Red Cross of Military Merit by Franco. In fact, during the Spanish Civil War, the Nationalist forces had started to think all the English were a lot of communists. Because so many were fighting in the international brigades, Philby became an exception and the Nationalists liked him. He was decorated by Franco himself and became known as the Englishman decorated by Franco. And that opened a lot of doors for him. Because of his actions in the war, he was recruited to MI6 training in 1939. He impressed his seniors during World War II while working in black propaganda with the Special Operations Executive. During his time here, Philby remarks in a lecture given to the East German Intelligence Service just how easy it was to get confidential information and secrets from the British Secret Service. All he did was go out two or three times a week for a pint with the archivist who managed the files. They became friends and this helped Philby get access to files not even remotely related to his job. Every evening he used to leave the office with a big briefcase full of reports and actual documents from the archive. He used to give them to his Soviet contact the same evening. The documents were photographed and the next morning back in Philby's hands and returned to the archive. Philby mentions that if there had been proper discipline in the handling of papers in the SIS, that would have been quite impossible. Philby did this for years, providing the Soviets with an immense amount of British intelligence. Philby was almost caught later as Walter Kravitsky, an ex-Soviet intelligence officer, gave evidence to the MI5. Krivitsky claimed that two Soviet agents had penetrated the British Foreign Office and that one worked as a journalist for a British newspaper during the Spanish Civil War. Unbelievably, no connection with Philby was made and Krivitsky was, probably not surprisingly, shot in a Washington hotel room a year later. 